Hello friends and welcome to a lecture on operation research. Today in inventory theory we will learn about economic order quantity model with plant shortages. In short this is also known as EOQ model with plant shortages. This is Professor Arvind Prasad. In an EOQ model the demand can be predicted with good confidence that is the forecast of future demands is more or less a pretty accurate thing. Also, the review of inventory is continuous. We continuously, that is almost at the day end, we check out what is the inventory. Well, there are computerized systems today, so we can know the inventory level instantly. And whenever a critical level is reached, that, that is whenever the inventory level falls to critical level, we immediately order. Now, once we order, the supplies to the inventory come in immediately. There is no lead time required. That is, there is no delay between the order place and the supplies coming in into the inventory. Also, product is being withdrawn at a constant rate. That is, whatever units are being withdrawn from the inventory, they are being withdrawn at a constant rate. Also, the inventory is replenished in fixed batch sizes. So the batch size, let us say, is Q. So whenever we place an order, we receive a batch size of Q units to replenish the inventory. And this is done so whenever it is required. That is whenever you place the order. And also what it is done in this model, that is EOQ model with planned shortages, it is created or it, the batch size is given or a batch size of units are put into the inventory after a planned shortage is created. Now, what is a planned shortage? In planned shortage, we allow a backlog of orders. That is, though our inventory level has fallen to zero, we still take orders and we allow a shortage. Now, let us define a few terms here. K is the setup cost for ordering one batch of replenishment. C is unit cost for producing or purchasing one unit. H is holding cost per unit per unit time in the inventory. And D is demand number of units per unit time. To start with, we have S units. The units are withdrawn at a constant rate D. So the inventory level at any point is S minus DT. We come to the inventory level 0. That would require time S over D. Now what we do after this is we start still taking orders and create a backlog. We create a backlog till the total demand for units is Q. Now we place the order and Q units come immediately into our system. Now since the backlog is Q minus S, this backlog is immediately cleared. And now we start with S units. Therefore, S is nothing but the inventory level just after Q units have arrived in the inventory. That is because from Q we have created a, a we have cleared a backlog of Q minus S and uh, Q minus S is the shortage in inventory just before Q units have been added in the inventory. And here P is nothing but the shortage cost per unit short per unit time short. During each cycle, the inventory for, that is the positive inventory is for a time S by D. Okay, the inventory is positive for a time till time S by D. Till time S by D, the inventory is positive. To start with, the inventory is S. It drops at a rate D. So, the inventory level at any point of time is S minus DT. And it falls to zero at a time S over D. 
and the average inventory level during this time is s by 2 that is 0 plus s divided by 2 that is s by 2. So the holding cost for this cycle that is a cycle of s by t is going to be s by 2 into h into s over d where h is the holding cost per unit time per unit. And the shortage cost per cycle is obviously going to be what is indicated here that is q minus s divided by 2 into p into q minus s divided by d. Now the total cost per cycle is going to be k plus c over q where k plus c over q is the total cost of ordering q units where k is the setup cost, c is the cost per unit and q is the number of units that have been ordered. H S square by 2D is the holding cost and P Q minus S the whole square over 2D is the shortage cost. Now we divided over, we divide the entire quantity by Q by T to find out the total cost per unit time. Now as we can see here this model with respect to T has two decision variables. One is Q and one is S. Now we differentiate this equation that is the equation for t with respect to q and with respect to s. So we get s, we also get q and we get t and q minus s. So the fraction of the time that no shortage exists is nothing but p over p plus h. Now let's take up a problem. A television company requires 8000 speakers a month. The initial cost for catering to the order is $12,000. Now what does this mean? Whether you order one speaker or whether you order 8000 speakers, up front you have to pay $12,000. The unit cost for a speaker is $10 per piece. The holding cost is $0.3 per piece per month. That is if we held one piece of speaker for a month, the holding cost would be $0.3. Find the economic order quantity and the cycle time if planned shortages are permitted. The shortage cost is $1.10 per unit short per unit time short. Now what is shortage cost? Of course as discussed it is the cost that we have to incur if there is a shortage in the number of speakers that is the speaker is not physically available to us. So the economic order quantity is going to be Q which is 28,540. Now what is S? Once the economic order Q is received Okay. Immediately after it is received, the backlogs are cleared. The backlog is going to be Q minus S. So what is S? S is 22,424. Now, once the backlog has been cleared, 22,424 speakers will be available to us for use. The cycle time for ordering is going to be 3.6 months and the maximum shortage is 6116 speakers. This is the difference of Q minus S. This is also the backlog. So that will be all my friends. Do like and subscribe my channel. Goodbye. Have a great day.